This is Devil Summoner 2, one of the coolest games I've ever played. Quite imaginative. I had no idea what to expect going into this because I've not played the first one and I'm just blown away by what an elaborate, creative game this is that is surprisingly easy to pick up and play. It's difficult to categorize. It's an adventure game, not really a role-playing game, where your main character is a devil summoner who summons demons. And the demons are one of the core elements of the game. I'll get into that in a moment. You start out investigating a missing person's case at a detective agency in the capital of uh, wherever it is. And this is on the PlayStation 2. It has a very rich, vibrant, lifelike feel to it. The city itself is very well done. And while it's not a true real-time 3D game where you can rotate the camera around your guy running around the city, you uh, run through each screen independently, so that's a little weird and uh, kind of awkward to get used to, but once you figure that out, it's really cool. And even if you're used to playing PS3 and 360 games, you won't have any problems with the technical quality here in Devil Summoner 2. <laughs> this reminds me of Soul Reaver a bit, and I'm pretty sure I just sold this game to a bunch of you because you either like Soul Reaver or you love Soul Reaver. You play the game in the real world or you go into the Shadow Realm. I forget what they call it exactly. The Dark World, the Dark Realm, the place that's not as bright. And it's chock full of demons like nuts in a candy bar. I just came up with that. They're nutty demons, too. Where do you see some of these guys? There it is. Dark Realm. I got it right on the third try. After playing this game for seven or eight hours, you think I would know that, but I really feel like I'm just getting started this is a massive, massive, large, time-consuming video game. Countless lives have been devoured by Atlas published video games, including this one with good writing all around. This is obviously very Japanese, and I have no idea if there's any translation differences between the original version and this English version, but some of the writing is just hysterical, like the part about demons forming a giant robot, any Voltron or Devastator reference just wins me over right there. Alright, so I'm fighting a lawn ornament gnome thing and a swamp monster with a, a snake dog-like thing and a pixie. That's about as normal as it gets in this game. In the Dark Realm, you have random encounters with demons, and you can negotiate with them and try to recruit them to be your demon, or you can fight them and earn experience points and level up your character and your demons. I'm making this a long review because I have a feeling the gameplay itself will speak more than I can, and you should see a lot of the gameplay because this is a terrific game that I think you should experience. <laughs> If you like these Japanese-style adventure games, it's not a cutesy anime kind of game, as you can probably already tell. Now I'm going to fuse demons at the Guma Den. Don't you know what that means? It's like mixing cocktails except with demons. And it's awesome. Let's just watch this because it's just so damn cool. I'll have a gin and fire-breathing pixie. No, actually I'll have that Christmas tree ornament angel demon because I need a wind order demon to fly somewhere. Alrighty then, my tubes are full of demons. I'm not making that up, that's, that's actually part of the game. In battle, you can have demons fight alongside you, and they have magic powers. So they're like your left and right fist of weirdness when you go into combat. 
They can also heal, stun enemies. They do all kinds of things. And when you fight the more powerful enemies, you need to use your demon's magic more so than your actual physical combat skills. You have a pistol, and at least initially you have a sword. I'm, I'm doing primarily just straight up button mashing combat against most of the enemies I'm fighting in this review because I'm still working on leveling my character up. And this whole thing is like an adventure game where you track down one guy, fight him, win something, and then you use that item to unlock some other part of the game and then have to go hunt down something else. I haven't seen much in the way of problem solving. It's pretty straightforward. And for a complex game like this, as I said, it's a surprisingly easy game to pick up and play. The controls are very well laid out. You can get by some battles with just button mashing. Other battles you have to actually sit back, plan ahead, use items, and then use specific magic spells from your demons. I guess there's a bit of problem solving, or, or at least trial and error, when you try to recruit these demons that you meet in combat. You want to have a lot of different demons, and you can make all kinds of crazy demon combinations, and when you make a new demon, they retain the skills of the previous demons and just become stronger, I think. Or something like that. For instance, in one part of the game I needed to transform my appearance to look like somebody else. So I had to go out and find a demon that could do that, and then you can summon demons while you're in the real world and they can help you uh, read people's minds or made me look like somebody else. If you can't find a particular demon for the job, you have to then find uh, other demons that you can fuse to create that demon, or find demons to fuse into demons to fuse into demons, and then you use them in combat, and you can just hang out with them. They're like your friends. I mean, your other friend in this game is a talking cat, so you clearly keep weird company here. <laughs> In this battle, I'll be using some more magic, so you can take a look at the menu structure here. It's very easy to navigate. And that's Devil Summoner 2. Highly recommended. Did I mention this game is weird? Oh, my God. 